everybody, Sponge Murphy here. How you all getting on today? Right, so uh, welcome to this video. I will be showing you guys how I painted Tankle from the big massive kit of Tankle and Bone Ripper. Really awesome looking model. Uh, kind of intimidating to paint a little bit, but when I broke it down to different steps and I did a bit of research on what colors everyone else used and what way uh, to approach, which parts to do first, it was it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So first off, I started off with, with slanish grey on any of the fur parts. Now I had slanish grey, and I've never really used it. And what I figured out was, once you put the wash over slanish grey, I know it's not a base color. Uh, it's a, I think it's like a highlight or a layer color, but once you put the nullin oil wash over it or the shade over it, once it dries, you get this really nice kind of purpley uh, gray effect coming up out of it. So I applied all that all over it um, onto his hair as well, coming off the top of his head, the fur around his arms, and the fur on his cheeks as well. So then, once that was all good and dry. Uh, I just simply dry brushed it with Dawnstone then as well, just to get the edges uh, to get them to pop out a little bit more. So moving on to the flesh, that's when I started with Rat Skin Flesh as the base colour. Uh, there's not a whole lot of flesh to do, but the parts that you do have to get done with it are pretty prominent, like the face, uh, the hands, the feet. So they're really, uh, they're kind of pr there's not a whole lot of it, but it is prominent part of the model as well. And then once that was good and dry, I gave it a, an overall shade of Reikland Flesh Shade all over. Not too much, I didn't want it to pull up too much, but uh, it's a really good shade, Reikland Flesh Shade. I really like using it on lots of different colours. Um, it's just it's so much lighter than Agrax or Shade, it really works a lot on skin tones. And then again, once that was all good and dry, I went with the final layer of Cadian flesh on. I, you could add, you could go higher with the layers, um, but it's it gets a lot harder. You really have to start pinpointing certain parts. And as far as my skills go, this is the best I can get it. But the Cadian flesh on just highlight all the most prominent parts of the skin, uh, and make sure not to go over any of the kind of deep recesses that the Rikon right flesh shade had settled in as well. Now I left out the tail, I did the raskin flesh on the tail and I didn't put any other colours on that because I'm going to do that separately later on in the video. So everywhere, everywhere else on the skin except for the tail. And then once that was all dry I started on his robes. His robes are, well it's not his robes, well it kind of is, there's two parts, there's a top part and a bottom part. This is kind of the part that goes around his body which is storm vermin fur used on it. Uh, I once I seen how the Slanesh grey dried with that purple kind of look coming through it. Um, I was tempted to use it, but I just went with Storm Vermin and Fur, just to really differentiate. Uh, kind of talk, just to kind of separate the two colours that much more. And then again with the Reikland Flesh shade over that as well, really useful shade colour to have. And then pretty much like the fur, good old Dawnstone dry brush colour. Uh, just mostly over the, the higher parts to get it to stick out a little bit more worked out really well And I I don't know how I missed it, but I should have done this when I was doing the other part of the robes with the red Instead of layering, but that's that might be something I might revisit later on in this model uh, but Make sure to get all the high prominent parts with the dry brush not too much Kind of the whole go and try and use the whole thing that I knew now is less is more and it really works. It makes the grey, makes the robes, the colour in it pop out way more. So try and get every little nook and cranny that it's in there as well. So then moved on to the top robes. Top robes, which I think originally I was wanting to do my fist on red, but that was the kind of prominent red colour I used on Bone Ripper. So I went with corn red all over the top part as well. Uh, it's kind of tricky, so you have to kind of be a little bit careful not to make sure to paint over some of the other stuff as well. But, uh, yeah, corn red's a good colour. Once it dries, it looks really bright, but once it dries, it really dims. And then with Agrax or shit to really darken it down that extra little bit as well. Now 
once the shade had settled it was all dry I started uh, highlighting all the higher parts of it the most prominent edges sticking out with Evil Sun Scarlet now when I was watching this when I was editing it I really should have maybe gone for the dry brush effect of Evil Sun Scarlet on this to try and get it to match with the robe that kind of chalky look but uh, so that's something I might revisit later on in the in the future so then I moved on to his armor which I was a bit unsure what colour to do. I was a bit wary about using McCraig Blue. I thought it would have been too strong of a colour. and might have overshadowed all the rest of us. But it didn't. It was pretty good. Once I got that down and I put the null and oil wash over it. Or in the recesses. Uh, it didn't take away from too much. It's a really nice colour once it's kind of washed down. Then once that was all dried and I put uh, Calgar blue for a highlight on the helmet and I forgot to mention like the chest piece as well it's only a small piece sticking out but it's uh, it's e that small little piece you can spot it a mile away so just a highlight or edge highlight of Calgar blue along the edges of the armor then as well to finish it off Now, this, as I mentioned earlier, the tail, I, in almost every Skaven model I paint, I always like the tail a little bit of a different colour. So what I did with this, instead of giving it the right and flesh shade, I like to go over it with Carbog Crimson. It gives the tail uh, a completely different shade from the skin, and it makes it stick out that little bit more from the rest of it. So then I moved on with Screaming Skull onto the, any of the stitches. There's two parts of the model that have stitches. Uh, this side and then on kind of it's the opposite side of that on the inside of his legs have a little bit of stitching as well just very very uh, small parts to do but once it's done it's, it sticks out as well it's pretty nice looking and that's the inside part in there and then I moved on with Zandri Dust. Now this was for any of the kind of parchment parts. Uh, there's some scrolls on the side of his hip. You have his teeth and his nails as well. So once that was dry, good old Reikland Flesh Shed again. Just simply because I think Agrax Earth Shed makes it a little bit too dirty. So, Reikland Flesh is that much lighter. Um, I like to cover it with it as well. And then they have like the little skull on his hip as well. I did that with the Zandri Dust. I forgot to mention that part earlier. So, make sure to cover all those scroll parts, especially the side of it there. You can't really see it too often, but when you turn it at the right angle, it sticks out. So, you want to make sure to cover that as well. So, then on to the other kind of, let's say, uh, little trinket part on his chest and on top of the staff with Retributor Armor. Uh, I chose this because it's probably the only bronze colour I have. So, but it works out really well once you put an Agrax or Shade Wash over it, which I'm pretty sure is what I did. So once I got all that painted off and I let it dry, and then I put on... Oh, I didn't put on yet, that's what it was. I went with the staff first. I kind of got some of these parts a little bit funny. Uh, I, paint, I should have painted them all together and then do a shade over it, but with the staff I went over with the new paint that I bought, Dry Hard Bark which uh, looked really nice once it was dry, it wasn't too dark so that's when I put the Agrax or shit over that, what I should have done here is done the metal parts as well on it but I ended up doing that later so you put the Agrax or shit, I got it all over the staff um, on the top of it as well, all those brown parts will be covered in Agrax or shit as well, darkens it down a good bit and it really looks pretty good once it's dry as well Then, what did I move on to? Oh, all the silver parts, this is what it was. All the, there's like little silver spikes sticking out of the staff. So I wanted to make sure to cover them as well. And there's a little round piece on the bottom of it. And then, most importantly, the chain part he's holding on to. I want to get uh, well covered with lead belcher. So then once that was dry, 
there's really only one kind of wash I wanted to go over it with. That was null and oil. Could have went with Agrax or Shadow and make it dirtier, but the null and oil, I wanted it to look like, like a dark steel instead of dirty looking. And then I just highlighted the prominent edges with Rune Fang steel just to make some of it pop a little bit more. And I think I covered some of the spikes as well on the staff with it. Just the kind of prominent tips of it. Uh, some of the highlights along it as well and then what I did was also I started to just just very lightly brush it across some of the the markings on his little trinket here to make him stick out with the room bang steel and that's just some of the smaller parts left in to his tongue uh, simply just screamer pink just to give it a different color from the flesh And then finally I get to one of my favourite parts of the model, which is his horns, uh, his warpstone horns. So I was really unsure how to do this. Uh, edge highlighting is pretty hard to do this. So what I did was I went to Caliban Green. It's a dark green. It looks good for warpstone. And then simply just dry brushed. The only kind of light green that I had was the old goblin green. So I just simply dry brushed. I don't know what the equivalent of that is now. I have a couple of greens, but they're all dark. I haven't got any light ones. So really lightly, just almost nothing on the brush. Just to get just to hit those edges of the horns with goblin green. And then once that was dry, I went with Uriel. Uh, or I don't know, I'm gonna call it Uriel Yellow. Uh, even more or even less on the brush, just to get some of the edges to make it kind of stick out a little bit more, a little bit of a glow on them. And the horns turned out pretty well in the end. So I was happy with that as well. And then the final part that I did, uh, apart from just a few little parts where I tidied up and I finished off a few little things, but everything I covered, or everything in the video is like covered in that as well. So the final part I did was a little bit of corn red on his eye, and then once that's dry, I just put a tiny, tiny little uh, shade of Agrax or shade, or maybe a dry on flesh, I can't remember, just to darken around it. And uh, yeah, that was him. He finished. He took me a long time to paint because I had to sit down through a couple of sessions to get <coughs> to get this guy done. But once it's broken down, uh, it's not as intimidating as you think. So I'm happy how he turned out. The blue on the helmet uh, really didn't stick out as much as I thought it was. So I'm really happy with that. I thought the blue, that color blue specifically, would have been a bit overpowering. But I'm happy how it turned out. The red cloak. The edge highlighting on it is fine, I like it, but I really wish I could have just dry brushed a red onto it to fit with the robes as well. The horns especially, I'm really happy with them. I really like how it turned out. Well, for me anyway, it could have been, you could have really done like extra work on it to get it to stick out and glow and all that stuff, but I really like it. Skin, everything turned out really well with this model. I'm happy with how it turned out. So if you guys like this, make sure to hit the like button, comment and subscribe. Make sure to let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, if any of this helped you with a pet in your tank will model or any model that you're working on at the moment but uh, yeah so on the next video I'll probably be sticking this guy on Bone Ripper I'll have to get his base finished that's why I haven't put him on in yet I want to have everything all the parts finished I have Bone Ripper finished tank will finished and I want to get his base finished and then I'm going to put it all together and we'll get a good final look at the big guy and the little guy so once again thanks for watching make sure to let me know what you guys think below in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video